live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Let's flash back to week 18 of the 2021 season. I'm going to put you in the hot seat and make you the executive in charge of determining the national games that CBS is going to show. Obviously, if a team is playing in its home market, you have to show that game. So there's no getting out of that one. However, for 80% of the country and for every other market, you have the option to show one of three games at that 425 Eastern time slot. Option one is to show the game between the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins. This is a pretty big game, as New England can clinch the AFC East with a win and the Buffalo loss. Option two is to show the game between the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets. That is also a pretty big game, as the Bills can clinch the AFC East with a win. Option three is to show the game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. This game means absolutely nothing, as the Panthers are mathematically eliminated from playoff contention, and the Buccaneers have already clinched the NFC South, and can't get a bye week. Which game would you choose? If you went with option one, because that's probably going to give you the best game, even if there are some variables that have to happen for it to have meaning to the Pats, as a win doesn't automatically clinch the division for them, I've got no problem with that. If you went with option two, because that's a win and you clinch game, I've got no problem with that. But if you went with option three, you look really stupid. You chose the game that literally does not mean anything important. And in the final week of the season, you went for the game with no stakes attached to it whatsoever. But here's the crazy part. In 1983, a situation like this actually happened, where NBC had to choose between two games for the final week of the season, and the ball was completely and entirely in their court. One game meant the world. It meant a playoff spot was on the line. And the other game meant absolutely nothing. It was as meaningless as a clip show episode of a TV show. You think the choice would be insanely obvious, right? Go with the game that actually has meaning and that people care about. Well, if NBC did that, I wouldn't be making this video. And nearly 40 years later, there wouldn't be a story here. Because in 1983, NBC made one of the dumbest broadcasting decisions in NFL history with what they decided to air as their Week 16 regular season finale. And to say that there was uproar from this awful decision would be an understatement. Because this is the story behind the dumbest broadcasting decision of the entire 1983 season. Before I talk about the actual decision that NBC reached and came to, we need some context to understand the two games that were on the table, and how the season played out. In 1983, there were 16 weeks to the season, as each team played 16 games without a bye week. Only one network each week got a doubleheader, so only one network got the chance to air both an early and a late game. Naturally, with two networks airing games on Sundays, with CBS getting the NFC package and NBC getting the AFC package, the NFL decided to do a 50-50 split, where CBS would get eight doubleheader weeks and NBC would get eight doubleheader weeks. And because of how the schedule worked out, NBC got the golden goose. Because through 15 weeks, CBS had eight doubleheaders and NBC had seven. This meant that for the final week of the season, and the most important week of the regular season for obvious reasons, NBC was getting the doubleheader. And at their disposal, NBC had two options to show to a national television audience for their final game of the regular season. Option one was the game you're watching right now, and the game you've been watching this whole time, which was the battle between the New England Patriots and the Seattle Seahawks. In the eyes of many people, this seemed like the obvious choice, because this game meant the world. The Seahawks had been around since 1976, and though they had come close a few times before with a couple of 9-7 and seven seasons at the end of the 70s, they had never made the playoffs. However, this year, they had their best chance. Through 15 games, the Seahawks were sitting pretty at 8-7, and seven, and they did this without spending a single day below 500. After Dave Craig came into the fold at quarterback to replace Jim Zorn, the offense became a high-flying, explosive powerhouse highlighted best by their Week 13 victory over the Kansas City Chiefs, where they won 51-48 in overtime. Combine the surprising emergence of Craig, who you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, with one of the best running backs in football in Kurt Warner, the team's first-round pick who finished the 1983 season 
as one of the best running backs in football with over 1,400 yards rushing and 13 touchdowns, and one of the best receivers in Steve Largent, who had another season with over 1,000 yards, and the Seahawks were one of the most exciting teams in all of football, boasting the second best offense in the AFC through 15 weeks, only behind the Los Angeles Raiders. For Seattle, the stakes for this game were simple. If you win, you're in. Close to a decade of heartbreak and doing nothing is over if you win this game right here. At the time, this was, without any shred of exaggeration whatsoever, and without any hyperbole at all, the biggest game in the history of the Seattle Seahawks. And you can imagine, considering the fact that this game was at the Kingdome, that if the Seahawks won, that the crowd was going to erupt like you've never heard them erupt before, making for a great television viewing experience. They'd been waiting forever for this moment. But this game also meant something for the New England Patriots. At least, it did at the start of the day. Obviously, NBC executives cannot predict the outcome of the 1 o'clock slate of games and can't make decisions based off of games that haven't happened yet, as there was no flex scheduling back then. So the times were completely set in stone. But there was a real chance that this could have been an elimination game for both teams, in the style of Jets-Dolphins in 1991 or Rams Saints from earlier in the day. That didn't happen as it required the Browns losing to the Steelers or the Bills beating the Falcons, neither of which happened. And this meant that the Pats knew their fate by 4 o'clock and were eliminated from the playoff picture. However, if the Steelers, who were first in the AFC Central, beat the Browns, then this game would have been a win and you're in, lose and you're out for both teams, making the stakes as high as they can possibly go for a regular season finale. The whole football-loving country was interested in this game, this impacted Seattle's playoff fate, this had the chance at the start of the day to impact New England's playoff fate, and this impacted Cleveland's playoff fate, as if the Seahawks lost this game, then the Browns would be in the playoffs for the second straight season. For neutral football fans, this seemed like the perfect Sunday to cap off the season. Watch the Rams Saints elimination game at 1 o'clock on CBS, and flip over to NBC at 4 o'clock to watch the pseudo-elimination game between the Seahawks and the Patriots. Oh, and I got so hyped up on this game that I forgot to mention option two that NBC could have aired for this spot. Not that it matters, because they wouldn't be dumb enough to show it outside of California, since it means absolutely nothing. You had this game right here, which was a battle in the AFC West between the San Diego Chargers and the Los Angeles Raiders. No one, and I truly mean no one, cared about this game. For one, the Raiders had already clinched the AFC West, so the division wasn't on the line. I guess seeding was on the line to an extent, as if the Raiders won this game, they would be the number one seed, whereas with a loss, they'd be the number two seed. However, seeding meant absolutely nothing, because NFL rules stipulated that two teams from the same division could not play each other in the divisional round of the playoffs. Translation, since Denver was already in the playoffs as a wild card, if Seattle won their game, then the wild card game would be a battle between two AFC West teams, which is where the Raiders play. So regardless of whether the Raiders were the number one seed or the number two seed, they would have to play the number three seeded Pittsburgh Steelers in the divisional round. The Chargers had nothing to play for at six and nine. And we saw these two teams compete on national television earlier in the month when they played on a special Thursday night edition of Monday Night Football on ABC. And the Raiders won 42 to 10 in a game where the Raiders scored all 42 of their points in the first three quarters, meaning that they just took their foot off the gas late with the outcome never in doubt. So not only did we just see this game two weeks ago, but it wasn't even a good game, or anything close to that. And with that, it was time for NBC to make the all-important and, quite frankly, easiest decision ever. You can air the Seahawks-Patriots game that is the biggest game in Seahawks history, could decide a playoff spot for the Patriots if the 1 o'clock games go their way, and could significantly alter the playoff picture for the Cleveland Browns and for seeding purposes. Or you can air the Chargers-Raiders game, that means absolutely nothing. I've laid out the facts. With that information, guess what game 80% of the country got? You guessed it. Somehow, they got Chargers-Raiders. And to say that there was outrage from this would be an understatement. Unless you were in Massachusetts or Washington, or were in one of those regional markets, you were straight out of luck. NBC decided for some reason, that it would be a good idea to have the majority of the country watch a completely meaningless Chargers-Raiders game, even though no one cared about the game, and even though over on CBS, 
there were quite a few markets showing the Lions Buccaneers game at 4 o'clock as the station's single header game, with that game meaning the NFC Central title for the Lions. So you're going to be losing viewership to that game. It was a bafflingly bad decision that left a ton of people perplexed and left just about everyone asking, why? Why would you do this? It was so bad that even people within NBC, who had nothing to do with this decision, were openly bashing the company. Broadcaster Len Berman said upon announcing this decision that there was a furor from within the company, within the press, and within the public on airing Chargers Raiders over Seahawks Patriots. Multiple NBC affiliates immediately requested to be changed to the Seattle game, with one NBC employee stating, I was as unhappy as anyone. I'm a Browns fan, and I wanted to see if they made the playoffs. And broadcaster Charlie Jones criticized the decision, saying that if Seattle won, the celebration would have been unprecedented because of how important the game was. And the reason why NBC did this? They did it because of their belief that the Raiders and Chargers had more household names than the Seahawks and the Patriots, and therefore, more people would want to watch that game. Never mind the fact that the game meant absolutely nothing. Never mind the fact that NBC devoted the majority of its pregame show to talking about the Seahawks-Patriots game, only for the network to pull a fast one on unsuspecting viewers and show a completely different game. Never mind the fact that a lot of the big names to avoid furthering any injuries or to not take any chances, weren't even playing in this game. As an example, Dan Fouts sat out for the Chargers at quarterback. Never mind the fact that the energy for this game was going to be incredibly low for those aforementioned reasons, to the point where Reggie Rucker, who was working this game as the color commentator, said that receivers were going out of bounds to avoid getting hit. As we all know, Reggie Rucker has never lied about anything in the broadcasting booth. Despite all of that, they were going with Raiders Chargers as their national audience game. Just absolutely baffling, and NBC rightfully received a ton of criticism for this. Both of these games were ugly, three-possession affairs. The Raiders beat the Chargers 30-14, while the Seahawks beat the Patriots 24-6. Remember that both a 16-point game and an 18-point game back in 1983 were three-possession games, as there was no two-point conversion. However, one of these games actually mattered to the victor, and mattered to the outcome of the season. And that was the game in Seattle that inexplicably, NBC decided not to show nationally. Because any time you can air a meaningless game over an elimination game that happens to be the biggest game in the history of one team's franchise, you've got to do it. The great irony in all of this is that the AFC Championship game that season happened to be a game between the Los Angeles Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks, which the Raiders won 30-14. But the Raiders didn't just beat the Seahawks in the AFC Championship. They also, in one of the greatest upsets and stupidest results of all time, beat them in the eyes of NBC executives in the final week of the regular season. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.